Hello. In this movie I want to go over using brushes in Illustrator. Uh, brushes are kind of the first way that Illustrator had for creating some automated artwork. Rather than just having a fill or a stroke, you could apply some artwork to a stroke um, in the form of a brush. Now since then we've seen graphic styles and symbols come around where you can apply sets of fills and strokes in terms of graphic styles and then you can also just apply entire geometries with fills and strokes which would be a symbol. But brushes kind of started at all. Well I should back up actually brushes didn't start at all. Uh, Adobe um, earlier uh, developed global color which if you read the color chapter is really cool. You can create a color and if you update the color on the swatches palette it updates everywhere it's used. So that was kind of the first automation trick that Adobe had. But, but let's look at brushes as being kind of the first modification to the idea of, of a, a plain old fill and stroke. Now uh, there are a couple different types of brushes in Illustrator. You see I've got the, the brushes panel open here. Um, it's just available on the side. It's the little icon that looks like brushes in a can. Um, there's a few here. There's some calligraphy brushes along the top and I'll just pick one of these guys and use the, the paint brush tool and if I work with that you notice I just get kind of a, a basic um, stroke based off of the diameter of the brush. If I double click on it notice that it has an angle, roundness, diameter. Now right now these are set to random and fixed um, so there is some um, variation. I've, I've made an adjustment here. I made a brush. I'm, I'm using a Wacom tablet. So um, this brush is based off of tilt and pressure. So if I use it instead and I apply various levels of pressure to it, you can see I can get a pretty thick stroke and then a thin stroke and all on the kind of same trajectory. So you can see here that's, that's a pretty nice variation um, based off of the amount of pressure I'm applying. And I was applying it from a pretty good distance. Of course you'd kind of zoom in while you're doing this too. Um, but anyway, that's, that's a calligraphy brush. Um, there's also new with CS5 bristle brushes. I'll get out kind of the standard one they have here and you'll notice if you've used Photoshop with a Wacom tablet you've noticed a similar type of br bristle brush in there. Notice I get a preview of how the brush is going to apply and that's based off of the tilt of the pen right now. So as I'm rotating this pen around the um, brush is kind of mimicking that. Now if I click and drag I get kind of this neat um, overlay color and I can build this up just like you would build up watercolors. So in any case, um, that's a bristle brush and there's various levels of creating them. If, if you go in here and just choose new brush um, and bring up bristle brush, you'll find all kinds of different um, kinds of brushes that you can build. And I would just encourage you to explore it. It's, it's pretty straightforward and even if you don't have a Wacom tablet, um, you know, it's a fairly interesting, different looking kind of style. Now, aside from those, I, I want to deal with um, three brushes that are involved with this assignment. The first one is an art brush. And what an art brush is, is it's just a collection of artwork that's spread across or the length of a stroke. So I've made, uh, I've kind of made some of these pre-baked little bits of artwork so I wouldn't bore you in the construction of them. But Suffice it to say, this is all just vector stuff. Um, I did a little stroke variation with the, with the width tool in CS5, this little guy. But other than that, um, it's just plain old vector art. So I'm going to select all of it. And I'm going to make a new brush. I can also just click the new brush icon down here. And I'm going to choose art brush. When you do, it opens up the art brush palette here and you can see it's figuring out how it's going to apply the artwork. Now I could change the direction so that if I drew it out instead of 
uh, ending with this blob. It would start with a blob and end with this kind of taper, but I kind of like it just as it is. Um, for colorization, I'm going to just say refer to the book. The book does a great job describing how colorization works, but essentially when it's set to none, it doesn't matter what color your stroke is, it's going to use the artwork color instead. If you fiddle around with this, you'll see how it, how it works, but the book does a good job of describing this too. Um, and I think also you can get some tips here. It'll describe how to um, how coloring will change things as well. So um, I think the documentation is there for you to kind of figure that out. So anyway, I've, I've picked this. Notice it can scale proportionally, or it can just stretch it to fit the length of the stroke, or it can stretch between some guides. I'm going to just say stretch uh, to fit the stroke to the length. So big deal, nothing's happened. But notice it appears here in the brush palette. Now, if I select some artwork, I'll go ahead and choose this artwork and apply the brush to it that stroke now gets scaled and fills across the artwork. Now the artwork I've picked is very angular so it doesn't look great with, with the brush I'm using here. But I wanted to show you that you could use brushes without necessarily having to use the, the paintbrush tool. So I'm going to undo that and I'll just get out the pencil here and draw kind of a squiggly line and apply that and it makes the art brush follow the length of the stroke. By the way, if you ever want to get rid of a brush, once it's applied and it's after command uh, undo is available, so let's say you saved it and closed it for the night, just open up your appearance palette and then here you can reduce it to its, its uh, original appearance. You can just drop that down and it gets rid of the, the brush that way. Um, so anyway, let's let's get back here. So art brush is pretty straightforward. It takes the art and it applies it the entire um, length of the object. So one bit of artwork applied across the length of the object. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a scatter brush. So I've, I've again made just a little bit of artwork. We'll zoom in. Pretty simple stuff. Some basic geometry. And again, I fiddled around with the stroke with that with that tool. Um, again, the, the width tool. I'm going to select that artwork. With it selected, I'm going to make a new brush. I'll just go ahead and click the dog here again. I'm going to choose scatter brush here. Now what I always do is just run with these things right off the beginning and I'll show you how to make a variety of this um, once, once you've made it. So I'm going to just go ahead and say OK. Notice it appears here in the palette. I'm going to zoom out so we can see what, what's happening here. Come over and select that stroke I made earlier. And I'll apply the scatter brush. And you can see that the artwork just gets repeated across the length of the brush. Now, if we open this up a little bit, so I'm just double clicking on the brush, we can modify this. Um, we can change the size, and I'll just turn on preview. This is a great way of, of modifying your artwork so you can see how it works. Um, you can adjust the spacing so that it's overlapping a bit, or so that it's opened up based off of the size percentage. You can set this to be different amounts. Notice that there's pressure in here too, so I could set size to be pressure sensitive. Um, and then spacing, we could fiddle around with that. I like this random setting. If you choose random, it gives you a range for spacing. So it's going to be anywhere between 82%. Oops, I'm sorry. And 128% in this case. By the way, if you hold down Option while you do this, it'll adjust both of these levers at the same time, which is pretty cool. Um, scatter, that's kind of what the whole name is implied from, is the distance away from the path on either side. So if I set it to fixed, notice that it all jumps to the right or it all jumps to the left. Now, if I come back, set this over to random, again I'll just hold down option and do a varied amount, 
it's going to vary it between these amounts. Now rotation we could do again based on a couple of things. I'll choose tilt here. Um, it can rotate relative to the page or it can rotate relative to the path which is kind of neat. So scatter brush takes one little bit of artwork and repeats it along this, the path edge. So imagine you're doing a tree and it has to have a bunch of leaves on it rather than option copying or even using symbols and spraying them out and then having to adjust rotation on all those symbols. It's, it's a lot easier I think to just take your artwork put it into a scatter brush and then scribble over the top of it. It'll put things in like rotation and size just based on how you're drawing them out. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK. When I do it asks whether I should apply it to the strokes. I will. And now let's uh, Let's try something else. I'm going to get out my paintbrush here. Scatter brush is selected and now since I have various levels of pressure I can apply and tilt. I'm just kind of alternating that as I draw this around and you can see it's scattering and, and running around. Some of them are smaller, some of them are larger. Um, small ones. Let's do a heavy pressure and when I do heavy pressure, notice it's bigger. So that's kind of cool. That's what a scatter brush does. All right, now for the last one. And this is a pattern brush. Pattern brushes have two parts to them. The first thing you need to do is make patterns. If you haven't read the color chapter yet, um, you might go back and take a look at it. It has a section on making patterns. Um, patterns normally are fills. Um, but you can also use them for this pattern brush. So to make a pattern what you do is you take the objects that you want to turn into the pattern and you drag them over into the swatch palette. And I'm just going to select each of these one at a time and do that. Notice it can also be just individual paths. There we go. Now, again, what a pattern normally does is if I were to make a great big rectangle here and choose one of these patterns, it would just fill with that pattern over and over, which is cool in its own side. Read in the pattern chapter, by the way, it talks about ways that you can make seamless patterns rather than having them just come right up next to each other you can actually crop a pattern down. In short what you do is you make a little rectangle without a fill or stroke and you put it behind all of the other artwork in the pattern and then drag it over and that little rectangle tells Illustrator how to crop the pattern down. The rectangle has to be behind the other artwork and it has to have a fill and stroke of none. Okay, but anyway, what I've done is I've, I've gone ahead and made this pattern. Now what I need to do is make the pattern brush. So I'm going to come back over to the brushes palette and I'm just going to make a new brush, tell it to be a pattern brush, and it opens up kind of this weird little interface. What each of these are is they kind of signify different parts of the pattern. So for instance, when it's just a straight ahead run, so imagine an oval where all you're going to have, you're not going to have any corners, you're not going to have a start or a stop, you're just having kind of a line segment, you're going to specify one pattern. Now I could have gone in and named these patterns, but I'm going to just identify them by clicking through these. And I'm going to choose the little one that looks like a road. Um, for my straightaway. And then for our corners, and I always screw this up so we'll just see how good I, I'm here at getting it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose that arrow. Here we go. And for this other corner, I'm going to try choosing the same arrow. I always get messed up on this, but let's just see what happens. Notice that in this guy, we're dealing with the start point of the segment. So I'm going to choose the little thing that looks like a green light. And then for the stop or end, I'm going to choose the guy that looks like the stop sign. There we go. And again, much like everything else in here, I'm going to just go ahead and set it to run and then we'll come back and edit it in a second. 
Now I've made this shape already that kind of tests this. It has a couple of hard turns in it, and it has a start point and end point. You'll notice that the pattern pops in here. I'm going to go ahead and apply it. Yeah, and I got pretty lucky. In this case, here's my start. It runs around, and I get the nice little arrows on the corners. So in this case, I used the same tile for both corners, and what Illustrator did was reflect it. So that's a good thing to remember if you, have, if you run into this again. Um, I made this secondary arrow, but whenever I chose it, it never worked right. And again, like other brushes, you can go back, double-click on this, and adjust things. So I could add space. If I do that, notice it breaks the, the tiles apart. You can come up with an approximate path, and you know, to be honest, I haven't noticed a big difference between that and stretch to fit. When I click between these two, I don't notice much of a change. Um, and again, you can flip and adjust scale and all those things. If I need the pattern to be a little smaller, it tightens it up for me. So all those kinds of things are cool. Um, why don't, just since it is colored black, I'm going to go ahead and pick um, a hue shift here. And when I do that, notice that it now starts to look black inside the pattern. It's based off of this hue, which is in a lot of these different parts of the design. This kind of um, reddish rust color is appearing in a lot of the different things. And again, we can choose tints and shades, just tints. Notice it lightens it, or we'll just set it back to none. So that's what a pattern brush does. Um, now, why would you ever use it? How many times do you make little road maps like this? Well, maybe not that much, but you probably, from time to time, will need a certificate border. And if I draw out this and apply the pattern there, now I can get a certificate border, a custom made one. Um, just a few other notes. When I made the pattern, I was fairly careful here. Notice that I missed it just by a little bit. I wanted the, the um, edges of the pattern for this road to be pretty much right on the spot. And if you, if you get it precise, then what you can do is have a seamless pattern where it seems to just hook up and run through. Um, that's, a, that's a good idea for something like this. Obviously, I'd go back and do a little bit more work and just make sure that that was perfect. Um, but that's really it. That's that's what brushes do in Illustrator. They're they're really cool little tools, and it's a great way of quickly distributing artwork inside your document um, without having to option copy or even create symbols. I I think using brushes are are fantastic productivity saver. Please let me know if you have questions.